Good morning. Welcome to Stony Creek United Methodist Church. I am Pastor Michael. For those of you who may be joining us out in our parking lot, can we get a couple car honks so we know you can hear us okay? Awesome. Uh, and welcome to those of you joining us via Facebook Live or listening to this later on our podcast or call-in number. It is the fourth Sunday of Advent. Um, and a, we have a couple of quick announcements. One, uh, our Christmas Eve service, if you didn't already see, the info will be at 5 o'clock on Christmas Eve, uh, which is Friday. Um, so uh, we will also, though, broadcast that via our uh, Facebook Live and via the um, radio if you want to drive in and not come inside. So um, also... Uh, Later on in your bullets and after the Lord's Prayer, there was going to be a uh, special music. Um, we are not able to do that today. Um, instead, we're going to do hymn 202, People Look East. Um, so hopefully I will remember to 
uh, mention that when we get to that part, but just in case, uh, collectively, hopefully, we can all uh, remember at least one person well. Um, I feel like I'm forgetting something. Do we have other announcements? Sure. You know how um, at this time of the year there wasn't any more room at the end, so Mary had to go to the stable? We have no more paper in the machine. So if anybody has that Christmas spirit and would like to go and buy a ream of paper so we can run programs off, feel free. <laughs> and that's all I got. Did you have anything in your list of goodies? Yeah. If you notice that funny smell in the air, it's not, we didn't have a bonfire at our house yesterday, but Ryan came over and smoked jerky for like nine hours. So we all smell like burning, whatever that is. He burns in that. <laughs> but, but we did celebrate 56 years of marriage last night, so that's nice. Yay! Okay, without further ado, let's start our worship. Please join me in the call to worship. Because Christ has been born in the world, people who walked in darkness now live in great light. Because Christ has been born in the world, the power to oppress and kill will not stand. Because Christ has been born in the world, we respond in wonder. With the angels, we sing glory to God. With the shepherds, we share the good news. With Mary, we ponder the words of that night and the word that has and continues to come into the world, Emmanuel. Our first hymn is While Shepherds Watch Their Flocks.
Now, if you're lucky enough to have a bulletin, our next is an opening prayer. Please join with me. Glorious God, on this coming Christmas Eve, we will sing beloved carols of Bethlehem, of shepherds and angels, of Mary and Joseph, and the infant Jesus our Savior. Is it yet a new song we can sing to you? A song to be learned from the heavens and the earth, where the roar of the sea, the exaltation of the fields, and the joy of the trees are already raised in a chorus of glad rejoicing, ready to welcome you. Even if no ear may hear your coming, help us hear the music of creation. Then with the whole cosmos, we will sing of your salvation, declare your glory, and in the crescendo of praise, bless your name. Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Amen. Please join us in the Advent Meditation. Time of Reflection. Let the shepherds greet God incarnate not only in the barn but in the animal's trough. Points us to the table. Luke does not show Jesus resting on a pile of quilts in the corner, but in the feeding place. This baby resting in a manger on the night of his birth will be the bread of God which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. The very bread of life each time the community gathers around the table, it remembers this mystery that though it is beyond our comprehension, God told us, took us on human form, lived among us, suffered under for us, died and was raised, that we might know true life in the world and the next. Our response, how is God Emmanuel with us in this, in this time and place, a prayer we lift. Jesus Christ, Emmanuel, light of the world, Savior of all, we welcome you. We welcome you. Amen. Lighting the candle. The candles on the three have their own special significance. The four candles represent the four weeks of Advent, and one candle is lit each Sunday. Three of the candles are purple because the color violet is a liturgical color that signifies a time of prayer, penance, and sacrifice. On the fourth week of Advent, we light the final purple candle to mark the final week of prayer and penance as we wait for the birth of our Savior. This final candle, the angel's candle, symbolizes peace it reminds us of the message of the angels, peace on earth, goodwill toward men. affirmation of faith. We believe that God has come to us, that God brought us into being, that this God gave us breath and purpose, 
that we have been blessed to be a blessing to others, that we have fallen short of this commandment, but that God has nevertheless loved us despite our brokenness. We believe that God is coming to us, that God is not happy to leave us alone, that this God will come to us as a particular human being, that God will be made known to us in flesh and bone like ours, that Mary will soon give birth, and Joseph will soon clap his hands in joy, that Jesus Christ will be born and our salvation made complete. We believe that God will come to us, that God will have a fine word, and that that word will be good, that this God will give us the presence of the Spirit to continue our work, that we are called to be disciples to all the corners of the earth, that the day is coming when tears and pain will be no more, and all will gather at the table to sing an endless and perfect Alleluia. As with last week, we will not be passing around the offering plate, so if you would like to leave an offering or a gift, we ask that you would use the white church in the very back by the narthex. There is a slot there you can uh, put items into. Because God so loved the world, God sent the Son into the world. In response to this good news of great joy, we offer songs of praise, tithes, and offerings and acts of service. Please use this time to enjoy the special music that Tammy will be playing. Please rise and join me in singing our doxology. Pray God, accept these gifts we offer as we wait in hope for your coming again. Use all that we have and all that we 
are as you bring light in every darkness, ease heavy burdens, and turn our endless warring into your endless peace. In Christ's name we ask it. Amen. You may be seated. It is now time for our youth moments. I'd like to invite our youth and children to come hang out. How you guys doing? So, I have a question. You guys are siblings, right? And 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 you two are siblings, right? Yeah. Okay. So, do you guys ever fight? No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Aiden, Aiden. No, you don't. Yes, yeah, so I I know. Okay, sit down. Okay, so, so that happens sometimes. So, sometimes siblings, they, they fight. Yeah. Yeah, it, it happens sometimes. Hey! Hold on, hold on. So, you guys are siblings too, right? Do you guys ever fight? No, never? Okay, well, so, so sometimes as siblings, you know, they, they fight. Um, me and my sisters didn't fight a lot, but we, we had a fight every once in a while. Um, and I'd be willing to bet if, you're, if your parents have siblings, if you have aunts and uncles, they may have fought too. DeAndre, I need you to, no, you need to sit down. Um, but I'm guessing you guys don't fight all the time, right? Yeah. You guys get along, right? Yeah. And, and you, you play together sometimes, probably? No, I don't play with them. Okay. Um, <laughs> all right, so, yes. Okay. Um, you guys have friends at school and, and stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, do you, do you play with them sometimes at school? Okay. Okay, what? Also, me, I don't, I'm never going to play with my brother. I like playing with me alone and you or mom. Okay. Okay. All right, let's get back to the topic. What? I play with my AJ. Yeah, I know. I'm usually there for it. Okay, so. But when we get along and, and we're nice to each other and stuff, there are people who would say that that is when there is peace. Um, and adults, they fight sometimes. Um, and they argue, and they don't always get along. But when they do get along, and they're playing nice, that would also be maybe when we would say that there's peace. Um, and I'm going to be reading part of the Bible later uh, to the adults, the part where the shepherds are out in the fields, and they're watching all the, their flocks, their goats, and their sheep, and anything else they might have had with them. And all of a sudden, a bunch of angels come out of the sky, and they start singing. Yeah. Well, in a, in a minute. I promise. Hold on. So the angels come down, and they say, peace on earth, goodwill towards men or humans. And, and they were trying to bless people with peace, because back then... There was a lot of fighting going on. Um, and so they wanted people to know that there should be peace because Jesus was going to be born. And that was a really big deal. And they wanted Jesus to come into the world in a moment of peace. Okay? So here's what I want you guys to do for me this, this week. Okay? I know that you are out for school. 
Um, there's no school this week, right? It's winter break, yeah, and next week. You have two weeks. And I know that you might be hanging out with your mom or dad or grandma and grandpa or some other people during the day because you won't be at school. And what I would love for you guys to do is to try really, really hard to keep the peace at home, okay? So try not to fight, try not to argue, try to think about how Christmas is coming and that means Jesus is coming and all the good stuff that's gonna mean, okay? Can we try really hard on that? I, I, no one's gonna be perfect, it's okay, but can we try really extra hard this week for that? Okay. Yeah. It looks like a rock. Yes. I'll try, but I'm, I'm probably my family. All, hey, all God asks is that we try our best, okay? Because God loves us no matter what, just like your mommies and daddies and grandma and grandpas and aunts and uncles and all the other amazing people in your life. Yeah, but I don't think I'm going to be able to do that. Just try your best, okay? All right, we need to do the Lord's Prayer, and I lost track of whose turn it was. Does Miss Sarah remember by any chance? It wasn't your turn. Um, it was not some people that... It was Molly's turn. Do you want to... Do you think you can do it this week, Molly? Okay, tell you what, why don't we just do it all together, okay? So let's fold our hands, and we'll do the Lord's Prayer. We're going to do it all the way through. Ready? Yes. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you guys so much. It's time for Sunday school. So go follow Miss Sarah and go learn some fun stuff. For the rest of you, if you would rise and we will sing hymn number 202, People Look East.
You may be seated. As we prepare to lift our prayers to God, is there anyone who would like to lift up any specific prayers this morning, um, whatever it may be? Yes. Well, and the, the copier's replacement will hopefully get installed this week. Do we have others? <laughs> I'd like to ask that you uh, keep a dear friend of mine in your prayers. Um, he and his family are going through a very challenging time right now, um, and there's some unknowns about what the future might look like for them uh, so please keep uh, that family in your prayers. If you would join me now in an attitude of prayer. Glory to you, O God, for good news of great joy that you give to all people. Thank you for Jesus Christ, the Messiah, who lived among us and now reigns on high. Thank you for his light that shines in the darkness with the angels, we praise, sing praise to you, celebrating your glory in all the earth, in the Son given to us, and in your promised salvation. Gathered as a community on this Advent day, we pray for your church in every place, that we may make known to others what has been told to us about this child. Help us to bear Christ's light in every place of need. Draw near to those who spend this time apart from community, travelers and those far from home, people who live alone, one who waits in a hospital room, one who sits in a prison cell, one who is working deep in the night, one estranged from family or friends. Comfort those who are poor and vulnerable, the child at risk, the homeless on the streets, the family that is hungry, and those contending with prejudice and scorn. Restore those who have lost faith, lost hope, or simply lost their way. End the hostilities and wars we construct by ushering in the endless peace of your design. Establish your reign of justice and righteousness. You are the Lord of hosts, who with zeal will do this, through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Please join me now in our prayer for illumination. We would make room for you this night, night of all nights, dear Lord. Room in our minds and hearts, room also in our life together. Let your word be born in us anew, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, your splendor shines in us and through us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, the first scripture reading, you know, it's... I can't just let it lay. I have to look into it a little bit because I never know what I'm getting into. Um, <laughs> uh, I did find out, okay, there's angel in it. It's nice. We heard about the angel last Sunday, different angel. Um, a broom tree is simply a juniper tree as far as I can make out from what I have read. There's nothing more startling in here except that the first uh, book of Kings was written between 560 and 540 B.C., which I just can't even put my mind around. And uh, the author is thought to be the prophet Jeremiah. The scripture speaks about Elijah, however. 
And it reads a little bit like if anybody remembers those old adventure serials where it kind of leaves you on a cliffhanger at the very end, whether you don't know whether the good guy gets out or not. So it kind of reminds me of that. So it's 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 4 through 9. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a solitary broom tree. He asked that he might die. It is enough now, O Lord. Take away my life, for I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the broom tree and fell asleep. Suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, Get up and eat. He looked, and there at his head was a cake baked on hot stones and a jar of water. He ate and drank and lay down again. The angel of the Lord came a second time, touched him and said, Get up and eat, otherwise the journey will be too much for you. He got up, he ate and drank, and then he went in the strength of that food forty days and forty nights to Horeb, the mount of God. At that place he came to a cave and spent the night there. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, What are you doing here, Elijah? The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Our next hymn is What Child Is This? be seated. Our second scripture this reading this morning comes from the Gospel of Luke chapter 2 verses 8 through 20. This section of the text is titled The Shepherds and the Angels. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, 
For see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told to them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. If you would please join me again in an attitude of prayer. A loving God, we rejoice in the peace that we find in the message of the coming Messiah. We ask that you also bless us with peace in our hearts and minds and free us from the distractions of this world that we may fully focus on your message as it comes to us today. And now may the words of my mouth and meditations of our hearts together in this place be pleasing in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, good morning again to all of you on this fourth and final Sunday of the Advent season. With Christmas Eve and Christmas Day just over the horizon, we are continuing in our journey in our current sermon series, Angels with a Message. So far, we have covered a message of hope, a message of faith, a message of joy. And now we are going to be looking at a message of peace. Each of these messages were delivered by an angel who, throughout both the Old and New Testaments, had been very active as God's messengers to humanity. And we look at the list of recipients of these messages once again. We have Zechariah, the, the unbelieving priest. We have Mary, the young virgin. Joseph, the carpenter and concerned fiancé. And now these common shepherds out in the fields at night watching their flocks. All of them were met with these messages delivered by, by these angels and the impact of those messages on these people was profoundly life-changing in so many different ways, even though they all had the same primary focus in the message themselves. This week's story of a special message delivery is the first that is brought to a group of people instead of just a single person. So peace. Just like I inquired about joy last week, I still wonder, is peace a word that we really know? Do we really understand what the reality of peace actually is? Throughout all of human history, depending on how we define certain things like peace, war, unrest, etc., there has been very little time of true and complete peace. Even in times without physical war and conflict, there has been psychological war and conflict. There has been emotional war and conflict. It is very possible that at no time in our history that there has ever been complete peace across all of creation. Now that reality can be incredibly disturbing to think about. When I have spent time thinking about it myself, I have had to take a step back, make some coffee, and go give Sarah and AJ and DeAndre hugs to try to feel better. There are actually some historians that estimate that since 1945, 
or about 76 years, there have only been 26 days of peace. That works out to about one-tenth of a percent, again, assuming that their work is correct and how certain terms are defined. But even if they are correct in that estimation, is anybody really that surprised? What do we really know of peace? Several of you in this room were born into a time of war, or you grew up in one. Several of you even served your country in a war or conflict, conflict or police action, again, depending on how certain things are defined. And I can't say that I'm very thankful to each and every person who served in whatever capacity to help keep our country free from foreign tyranny and oppression. I'm only sorry that it is, that as God's creation, we have not been able to know an extended time of peace in our world. American composer and playwright Jonathan Larson, who might be best known to many in my generation for his rock musical titled Rent, which is a story of a group of impoverished young artists struggling to survive and create life in Lower Manhattan's East Village in the thriving days of Bohemian Alphabet City, all under the shadow of HIV AIDS. In one of the high energy numbers, one of the lead characters makes the claim that the opposite of war isn't peace, it's creation. And while I've never met Mr. Larson or been able to spend much time in deep research on his beliefs, I have to wonder if he was not onto something. If Mr. Larson was aware of the lack of peace in our world, as I suspect he was, I think I can see how his thinking might work. It would make sense to say that the opposite of war isn't peace, because even in times when there have not been large global wars and conflict, even wars between different governments, there still has not been complete peace. There are times before war where tension builds and things begin to deteriorate. War doesn't simply just happen like turning on a light switch. Even after war's end, there are still tension and fighting and really not any form of true worldwide peace. So since we cannot seem to achieve peace, maybe we can at least achieve some type of creation when war is not being waged. But we'll come back to that idea in a moment. So what does all that have to do with the group of shepherds from thousands of years ago? Well, let's take a look. As some of you may know, the shepherds and everyone else, including Mary and Joseph and Zachariah and Elizabeth, they were all living in a time of unrest and rioting. King Herod had made some decisions that involved the temple, and it was causing a great uproar amongst many of the people. Even in the time leading up to the birth of Jesus, there was no real peace to be had in the world, or at least in that part of the world. Now back to that line from Mr. Larson, the opposite of war is in peace, it's creation. Is that true? Can we really say the opposite of war is creation and not peace? I feel like I could argue it either way, to be honest. But here's one thing I do believe. I think peace and creation can go hand in hand. That is not to say that war and creation do not. Many important innovations have been developed during wartime or as a result of need during wartime. But in the context of this passage, I feel that there is a connection between peace and creation. According to the title of my sermon, I have called the message from these angels to the shepherds a message of peace. Now that might seem a little contradictory given how much chaos and trouble that Jesus' birth brought and then later in his ministry. 
but I believe it is still a message of peace, if for no other reason than the message brought hope, joy, and a sense of relief to God's people who had been waiting so long for this coming Messiah. And once the angels leave them, the shepherds, they leave everything, and they go off to see this great declaration And they find baby Jesus and Mary and Joseph, and they share with them everything that they had been told by these angels. And we read that Mary treasures all of their words and ponders them in her heart. Now that can be interpreted many different ways, but I personally don't really get the sense that she was unnerved or panicked by what she heard I don't think the word treasured would have been used if she was feeling something severely negative. We have no idea, though, about Joseph, as usual, as we're really not told of any kind of reaction by him either way. That doesn't mean for certain that Joseph was at peace with everything, but it also doesn't mean that he wasn't. But think about it this way, maybe. Mary and Joseph are told that their son is the Messiah. And they both had been told earlier that their son was going to go on to do great things. He will save his people from their sins. He is going to make things right again. Joseph and Mary and and everyone else could see what was happening out in their community. There was rioting, there was fighting, there was chaos. And here again, they are hearing about the great things that this child is going to do. It is not unthinkable that Mary and Joseph might have assumed that Jesus would bring peace to their community and to their world. So how does this work for us today? How do we use this message of peace in our world right now? Well, if we're going to be honest, the truth is that this message has been used probably more in war than for peace. How many holy wars have been fought? How many arguments and fights have come from this message? We can look at the Crusades or even some of the conflicts in the Middle East as having some foundation in this message. So what are we to do? Well, remember when I talked about peace and creation working together? I think that's really the key here. I think we need to look at this message of peace in ways that can lead to some creation. Creation of love, creation of acceptance, creation of of new ministries, creation of outreach. Maybe we could use this message of peace to create new venues to touch the lives of other people. How awesome would that be? Creating something founded in the peace of this message about God's love for the world. Creating something that is built upon the grace of this message of peace. And while you can argue that in the end the church itself was created out of this message of peace, I still think there is more that we can do. Our God is the original creator. We can find inspiration in that work of creation, in the love and dedication that God displayed through the saving acts of Jesus Christ. And now, we are invited. It is now our turn to create. It is our turn to find inspiration in the message of peace, to create something new, something that can benefit others. And what we create can can be literally almost anything. It could be something within ourselves that helps to reflect God's love for all of creation. It could be something like when we buy gifts for many of the families 
in need. And that allows us to share the blessings that God bestows upon us. Could be almost anything. The only requirement that I really see that must be addressed and adhered to that while finding inspiration in the message of peace, whatever we create must ultimately encourage peace. The goal must be to help to bring about peace to the creation that God has sacrificed so much to be in relationship with. We can no longer allow this message of the coming Savior to be used for war for deceit, for oppression, for suffering. It must be reclaimed for the peace and grace of God. So I want you to think, what will you go out and create? Will you accept this challenge? And it is not my challenge to you. I know that almost every week I will stand up here and leave you with a challenge or request for the coming week. But this is not my challenge to you. This one comes from the highest power, the highest authority. God has called each and every Christian to go out and make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of this world. And there are a lot of ways to do that. There is unlimited potential for creation based upon the message of peace. You don't have to go out and do something that is going to affect a million people in an instant. Some of the smallest and simplest acts that may only affect one person in that moment can have a domino effect. And even if it doesn't, if you can reach one person, that effort is worth it. I pray that each and every one of you will, will take up this calling, accept what God has entrusted to you, and create. Create something beautiful. Create something of love. Create something that centers on this message of peace for our world. The season of Advent is one of many messages and at least seemingly unlimited possibility. May God bless you, inspire you, and guide you to create in love in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. If you would please rise as you are able for our closing hymn number 224, Good Christian Friends Rejoice.
Beloved children of God, do not be afraid. The light still shines in the darkness, and the darkness cannot overcome it. Bear the light of Christ into the world with hope and great joy. The love of God, the light of Christ, and the joy of the Holy Spirit abide with you this holy day and forevermore. Amen. Thank you.